Two hours that the band will be playing in the in the city. So let's continue also. Let's keep praying for our members, our fellow members, those that aren't feeling well. They need our prayers. Let's keep uh, praying for them. Let's have a wonderful meeting and we welcome Major Dennis as she comes to lead us in our meeting. Amen. Well, June has been nagging me. What's the good news that made you put in the newsletter? And I can tell you the good news um, before Tom and Beth come up that they've applied to go into the training college to become Salvation Army officers. Isn't that wonderful news? I ask you to keep them in your prayers. They hope to go in next year. It's a big loss for us. But you know what? We need leaders. And God always blesses when a church gives. So um, we're really proud and really delighted um, that you've made that offer, that you've heard the Lord's call. And uh, before they come and lead worship, I just want to pray for them. Will you join me in praying for them? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for Beth and Tom and for Poppy and Florence and for taking this big step of giving their all to serve you, Lord, as Salvation Army officers. And we pray your blessing upon them as they have got a lot to do before next year. But Lord, we pray your blessing upon them and your strength for each day. And we thank you for them in Jesus' name. Amen. The second announcement is we found a new community manager. Hooray. Oh, you could sound happier. Hooray. Hooray. <laughs> um, her name is Linda Lum. And she will be coming as soon as her police check is through and her references are done. And um, I am just delighted um, that she's coming. Um, as a community manager. However, talking about the cafe, the cafe is part of this church. The cafe is part of the outreach of this church. And a few weeks ago, I asked for your help um, just to give a couple of hours or a morning or an afternoon. I am seriously short of volunteers. Yesterday, we lost a day's takings and we had to close the cafe because I had no volunteers. Saturday is my worst day. Now, if a group of you would agree to do a Saturday or half a day and take turns through the month, it would be covered. It would also mean I could have a day off. But it would also mean that when Linda comes, she is supported. This is your cafe, God's cafe. And you need to step up. I'm sorry to be so forthright but you need to step up okay because I need the help and Linda will need the help if you can give a morning or an afternoon I would be very grateful okay this is our service to the Lord but also we've got non-Christians coming into our cafe and we want to be a witness do we want to see them come to church do you do you really right then you need to do something about it, please, because I'm not a machine, and nor will Linda be, and we need help. So please come and see me afterwards, and I will start making a list. I'm saying this in faith. See me afterwards, and I will start making a list, because it's a shame when we have to close our doors, because our own people can't help. Okay? So if you can give an afternoon or a morning um, on a Saturday, Please come and see me. I thank those. There are those that do help in the call. So every, every Monday, even though she's not feeling well, comes and does the cafe. Lil, who's actually going through cancer treatment, is twice a week all day in the cafe. Amazing. Cindy comes in and helps in the cafe. Please, we need more helpers. Thank you. And now we're going to get on with worship. Thank you, Beth and Tom. We're hoping she's going to get over that by September. 
Okay, as we start worship um, today, we're going to start with a song um, by Matt Redman that all of us know, but I encourage you to look at the words. The reason that we come together in worship is not to sing songs, to play in the band, to wear the uniform, to look smart, or even to be in the same room, but the reason that we come together to worship is that we want to wholeheartedly sacrifice ourselves to the king, to the one who gave his life for us. So as we start with this song, the words say, when the music fades, all is stripped away, and I simply come, longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart. I encourage you to focus your heart and your mind on that right now as we come into a time of worship. So please stand as we sing these songs together. stripped away and I simply go longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within, through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you. All about you, Jesus. I'm saying that for the thing I made it. When it's all about you, all about you, Jesus. King of endless worth. No one could express how much you deserve. Though me can all I have is yours. Every single breath, I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself. Here's not what you have required. You search much deeper within, through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. And it's all about you, all about you, Jesus. I'm saying that for the thing I made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you all about you Jesus I'm sad for the thing I've made it when it's all about you all about you Jesus We're just going to stand here in an act of silent worship. I encourage you to close your eyes and to focus on the cross as we welcome the Holy Spirit into this place. If you want to take your seats, you can. But we're going to 
just stand or sit in silence in worship and adoration of the King. And generations falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. And all who've gone before us, and all who will believe, will sing the song of ages to the Lamb. A thousand generations falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. And all who've gone before us and all who will believe will sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Your name is the highest your name is the greatest your name stands above them all all things and dominions all powers and possessions your name stands above them all and the angels cry Forgiven, and if you be redeemed, sing the song forever to the Lamb. And if you walk in freedom, and if you bear His name, sing the song forever to the Lamb. Oh, we'll sing the song forever. Amen. And the angels cry, Holy, a creation cries, Holy, you are lifted high, Holy, Holy Father. Sing holy to the King of Kings. Holy, you will always be holy, holy forever. Hear your people sing.
Jesus, we praise you. We cry that you are holy. We thank you that we can meet together in this place and that your spirit comes with us. Father, we pray that your spirit would dwell in this place. This morning that we might know more of you, that we might love you more dearly, that we might see you more clearly. Father, be in this place. Be amongst all that we say and do. Fill us up and send us out, we pray. May we step into the mission that you have called us to. Amen. It's lovely to see you all as always and it's great to see so many and we're going to start with a quiz which will lead us into the story so children would you like to come up onto the platform and walk down all the way behind me to the end okay lovely oh, that's great need a bigger platform soon Right, so, they're not too difficult, the questions, so I'd like to stand back, but I can't really stand over here. I should stay by the mic, shouldn't I? Right, these are very simple questions, so if you know the answer, just stick your hand up and tell me the answer, and uh, I'll give you the a letter. I shouldn't give you the answer to the <laughs> Right. A chick hatches out of it. Hands up, who knows of it? Yes, well done. Is it Eve? Right. A baby sheep. A lamb. A lamb, well done. And we've got all the letters here, you'll have to get into the right order. Okay? We learn about God from this book. Yes? B for Bible, yes? A plant that climbs up trees and is sometimes called poisonous. It's only three letter, it's a three letter word, yes. I do. Yes, well done. Right. First day of the week. Beginning, not Monday, Sunday, that's it. Sunday. Not today, the first day. Right. Round hot and you get light from it. Yes, well done. It could have been fire, but it's how it was it. Noise a pig makes. Hands up. Noise a pig makes. What does a pig make, Ethan? A piggy noise. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. You can hold it. He goes, oi. Well done, Ethan. A piggy noise. He does. Right. They catch naughty people. Yes. Not a robber. This helps you when you're lost. This helps you when you're lost. Map, yes, well done. <laughs> and finally, opposite of out. In, well done. Now we've got all these letters. If you haven't got, don't worry because there's other things to do. Uh, if you haven't got a letter, move to that end, okay? And we've got, can anybody guess what this word might be? Because it's all jumbled up. It begins with I, and I chose this because it's to do with my wife's theme. So, it begins with I, not invisible, it's a long word, isn't it? It's got ten letters. Sometimes you, you might, you are teaching. Yes, well done, impossible. We want I there, stay there. We want M there. P, who's got P this way? P there. O next. O, E, the joint there. That's M. Possible. Um, we've got two S's. S, S, here, there. Impossible. D there. Stay there. <laughs> okay, impossible. That's it. Impossible. Right. First, I'm going to 
tell you to do two impossible things. Lift yourself up. Try and lift yourself off the ground and stay up off the ground. <laughs> uh, almost with that, <laughs> yeah. You can almost do it, Taylor. That's impossible, isn't it? Right, I've got something else. Oh, I've gone and forgot to read it. I was going to ask you to, as a thick book, I was going to ask you to rip it in half. But you couldn't do that, could you? Not the paper, that's easy to do. But a thick book, you know, like the telephone directory, it's so thick. Unless even a strong man couldn't do it. So we're going to tell you a story about something that's impossible. And before we do that story, there are sound sounds that go with it, okay? So I'm going to ask, we're going to go through the sounds and then I'm going to tell you the story. So those who haven't had anything to hold up, the first one, all chat make this sound. There we are. Well done. And that goes together. Swoosh. Swoosh, okay? Swoosh. The next one is somebody sleeping. Uh, okay, right. The next one is. Ah, it's a ghost. Together. Ah, it's a ghost. Right, I have to hold this up this end. Right. Ready? Wow. Wow. Okay. Who else can hold one? Right. Denise. Here you go. Oh no, oh no, okay. Yeah, well done. This is a funny one. It goes shh, 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 we pop. Okay, together. Shh, we pop. And finally, true. True, you know when you got relief. True. Right, who's going to hold this one? There we go, well done. Okay. So going through the story, Put your words down for now and I'll point you or shout out the person to stand up. So here's the story, okay? It's a story from the Bible which sounds impossible, okay? Jesus had been teaching the people for a long time. He told his disciples to go to the other side of the lake, Galilee, in a boat. The boat leaves. Swoosh, who's got it? Who's got swoosh? Swoosh, all together. Swoosh, as the boat sails out. Jesus goes off to pray. It's late at night, and on the boat, some are sleeping and keeping what? Zzz. Who's got zzz? That's it, hold it up. One man on watch sees somebody walking on the water. Ah, it's a ghost. But it was Jesus. Don't be afraid, said Jesus. It's me. When they realized it was Jesus walking on the water, they began to relax. Peter, who was feeling a bit brave, said, let me come out to you. All right, said Jesus, come and walk to me who's got well wow imagine that somebody walking on the water peter was not too far from jesus when he took his eyes off jesus and began to sink oh no jesus reached out and pulled peter out of the water swish we pop <laughs> <laughs> Do that again. Who's got the fraud? Ready? Fraud. Peter must have felt like that. Jesus said, How little faith you have. I think Peter forgot to trust Jesus, who can do anything. Now, Jesus can do the impossible, children, because he is God. He's able to help us even when things seem impossible i'm sure sometimes at school the teacher asks you to do something and you think i can't do that maths question it's impossible i don't even understand the question but with god's help you can sometimes our best friends let us down sometimes occasionally even our families let us down but god never lets us down 
Do you remember I asked you to lift yourself up? And you can't do that. It's impossible, isn't it, to lift yourself up off the ground. But God says, sometimes he says, I'm going to help you by getting your friends to help you. And I want, if, if you're in threes, to either side, lift up the other person. So get into threes and see if you can lift the person in the middle. Okay. There we are. There we are. He's lifting. Anybody else want to lift somebody up? See if you, see if you can lift your brother. And often, you know what, children? Well done. Ethan's easier because he's the smallest. <laughs> Often God helps us by saying, help yourself. I've sent you friends, I've sent you boys and girls to help you. And when we work together, we help one another to do the impossible. Finally, finally, the reason is because Jesus said, Jesus replied in the Bible several times, what is impossible with man is possible with God. So remember that when you're in a difficulty, children. Remember, pray to God. And God will help you. God will sometimes send an angel to help you. I've heard a terrible story on the radio yesterday. A man, he, be, he was beaten up, his car was stolen, and he was staggering along the embankment in the London, and a taxi driver stopped and took him to hospital, kept him talking, and when he got to the hospital, this is the impossible thing, the taxi driver said, it's okay, mate, I don't want your money tonight. I think that was an angel for God, and it saved his life. So remember, when something bad happens, pray to God, and he will help you through the impossible. Thank you, children, for helping me, and uh, I hope you have a great Sunday school today. Kids, Jeff. Well done. Thank you very much. Lovely. You go sit down now. Thank you for picking up the papers. While the children are sitting down, those that need the songbook, it's 525. 525. What a work the Lord has done. By his saving grace, let us praise him, everyone, in his holy place. He has saved us gloriously, led us onward faithfully. Yet he promised we should see even greater things. And here's the prayer, greater things. Give us faith, O oh Lord, we pray. Faith for greater things. Let's stand and sing together.
gentlemen, and now we're going to listen to the message from the band, please. And we're going to play a song arrangement of a tune you'll know, Our Consecration by Marcus Venables. And you may uh, recognise the words, O love that wilt not let me go, I rest my weary soul in thee, I give thee back the life I owe, that in thine ocean depths its flow may richer, fuller be.
Isn't that a wonderful reminder of the wonderful love of God that he will not let us go? Thank you, Ben, for that message. Thank you, Lisa. We're now going to give it in our offering as part of our worship. Thank you. Thank you for your giving. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are mindful this morning that you are still on the throne. You are King of all. And you love us. And that outpouring of the love is there for us all to claim. This morning we place these gifts before you as an act of worship. We worship you, Lord, here this morning in this place. We are so grateful for all you do for us and we claim your Holy Spirit, that living presence in our lives here this morning. Amen. Just a few quick announcements. Um, there will be a community choir practice after the meeting this morning or after you've had a cup of tea and um, all visitors, you are welcome to join us for tea and coffee after the meeting. And also, as Gilbert has already said, we do start caroling on the 30th of November, so it's less than two weeks away. If you can help with collecting, if you could please see Janet, um, all offers of help will be gratefully accepted. Thank you. Now there's time for testimony um, to share what the Lord is doing in your life just lately it's good to testify it's encouraging for each of us and uh, it lifts up the name of the lord so we're going to sing 873 the words will be on the screen jesus is my savior this i know he has given peace to my heart when my soul was burdened filled full of woe seeking from my sins apart graciously he heard me when i prayed drew me to his riven side there by faith i washed and so was saved his blood was there applied oh that's the place where i love to be for mighty wonders there i see would you be blessed and tarry with me at the cross of jesus we're going to sing the first verse and the chorus and then somebody will be ready with a word of testimony this morning Thank you. 
is there somebody that's going to testify this morning? Can you wait a minute, Jim, because there's a microphone just coming down. Okay, Mary's running down. <laughs> Wrong door. She'll be back in a minute. Friday and the lady came in and um, she sat and had a cup of coffee, we got talking only to find that she'd been um, dedicated in the Salvation Army. And we had a long chat and she wanted to see where the church was and she might be coming to Cameo. And then the other week, if any of you got time to come in, you'd be amazed the people would get in. The other day, another lady came in, we got talking over coffee and she'd been sorting out her things in a drawer. And she found her junior soldier pledge that she signed many years ago. And she's always kept it. And she always remembered when she gave her life to Jesus. And she's still serving God now. So if you've got time to come in, come in. They just love a chat. That's wonderful. June's really good, you know, because she just chats to people. And she tells them everything that's going on. Thank you, June, for your witness through the week. You're really on, on the ball. Let's sing this second verse together. month of having to hold on to God's promises. Life can be easy at times and other times we go through rough seas. It's been rough seas for me for about, about a month but God has blessed me a couple of times. He said to me stop and pause and this week has been a week where I've just needed to pause and remember that God has promised me his peace and he's blessed me with the most amazing journeys to and from work where I've had sunrises and sunsets that have just taken my breath away. And I just felt it's God saying, rest in my peace, a peace that this year I found in a way I've never found before. And I just wanted to say thank God, praise God, that even in the seas that are tricky and rough, he still blesses me and us with his peace. So praise God. Amen. Thank you. Okay, the third verse together, then somebody else be ready. Time for one more. Mm -hmm. 
I'm sure there's blessings to be shared. Christine. I was I witnessed happen in my garden this week and uh, I would be the only one that knew about it except I told Graham so keeping a secret is a very I'm not very good at keeping secrets and I said to Graham come and have a look at this just watch and the squirrel with his mouth with this great big fat ball <laughs> carried it along the fence down and then had to find the perfect place well we haven't got a very big garden and least places where a squirrel can bury his nuts but it was a huge fat ball and he buried it in a plant pot and we watched as he, meticul I say he, it might be in a sheet, meticulously emptied, pulled back the soil, big enough for this big fat ball. And then he covered it. And then on top of that, he placed all the leaves that were there to hide it. And I was in awe. We just stood, Graham took a photo of the little squirrel in action. His secret stash is in our garden. How wonderful is that? You might not remember where it is. And the dog hasn't even sniffed it out. But I was challenged because I have a secret stash, a secret that actually isn't mine to keep. And it's amazing, really. We, we're singing about it. We, we talk about it all the time, how we share Jesus. Now, the challenge to me was, am I so grateful for this big love that Jesus gives that I've buried it so deep inside of me that, and I've protected it with all the things around me so nobody else is going to find it in me because it's so precious to me. That's the challenge. How open am I to share the gospel with other people? That's a challenge for all of us. How open are we to share that precious gift that we've been given with others? Thank you. Just switch it off. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing this morning. Now Beth's going to bring to us our Barbara Wing. Bring Florence with you. Life is easy with baby in arms. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful to have babies in our congregation? It's wonderful. They might be a bit distracting, but you know, I don't care because they're just precious to God and precious to us. Precious and hard work. <laughs> the Bible reading today is taken from Luke chapter 1 verses 5 to 25 it all begins with a Jewish priest Zechariah who lived when Herod was king of Judea Zechariah was a member of the priestly order of Abijaj his wife Elizabeth was also from the priestly line of Aaron Zechariah and Elizabeth were righteous in God's eyes careful to obey all of the Lord's commandments and regulations. They had no children because Elizabeth was barren, and now they were both very old. One day Zechariah was serving God in the temple, for his order was on duty that week. As was the custom of the priests, he was chosen by lot to enter the sanctuary and burn incense in the Lord's presence. While the incense was being burned, a great crowd stood outside praying. Zechariah was in the sanctuary when an angel of the Lord appeared, standing to the right of the incense altar. Zechariah was overwhelmed with fear, but the angel said, Don't be afraid, Zechariah, for God has heard your prayer, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to name him John. <laughs> you will have great joy and gladness, and many will rejoice with you at his birth. For he will be great in the eyes of the Lord. He must never touch wine or hard liquor, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even before his birth. 
and he will persuade many Israelites to turn to the Lord their God. He will be a man with the spirit and power of Elijah, the prophet of old. He will precede the coming of the Lord, preparing the people for his arrival. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children, and he will change disobedient minds to accept godly wisdom. Zechariah said to the angel, How can I know this will happen? I am an old man now, and my wife is also well along in years. Then the angel said, I am Gabriel. I stand in the very presence of God. It was he who sent me to bring you this good news. And now, since you didn't believe what I said, you won't be able to speak until the child is born. For my words will certainly come true at the proper time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah to come out, wondering why he was taking so long. When he finally did come out, he could speak to them. He couldn't speak to them. Then they realized from his gestures that he must have seen a vision in the temple sanctuary. He stayed at the temple until his term of service was over, and then he returned home. Soon afterwards, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and went into seclusion for five months. How kind the Lord is, she exclaimed. He has taken away my disgrace of having no children. Thank you, Beth, and thank you, Florence, for helping out. <laughs> okay. Have you ever been told something wonderful is going to happen in your life? and replied in disbelief but how well i can't see that happening myself well that was zechariah's reaction when told by the angel gabriel that his wife elizabeth was going to have a baby and that child would be great among the israelite people and bring many people back to god if you remember um, quite a few weeks ago preached about Abraham, uh, Abraham's wife Sarah in the Old Testament had the same reaction but God fulfilled his promise to them both this promise from God came about at a time when for 400 years no one had heard a prophecy from God it's been said by some theologians that the people of Israel were in a state of lethargy nothing had happened for so very long that they'd actually stopped expecting it and i would expect like zachariah would be very skeptical when god did speak look at zachariah's response well how will this happen i'm an old man now and so is my wife she's well along in years zachariah was one of the best around. He was trustworthy, devout and active. He was a priest. His ancestor was Abijah, whose forefather Eliza was the son of Aaron, the very first of Israel's high priests. His wife, as we heard in the scripture reading, was also a descendant of Aaron. Not one, but both were righteous and pious before God. Zechariah was a devout man of his own choosing, as was Elizabeth, a de devout woman of her own choosing. And since the couple didn't have any children, they gave the best of their time, their talents and treasures to serve God. Yet still, Zechariah was sceptical, which proves that even the best of us can doubt God at times. Like the Israelites who were waiting for the Messiah, we are in that in-between time. We've been waiting not 400 years, but over 2,000 years for the Lord Jesus Christ to return as he's promised. <coughs> and as I read this account, I thought, have I become too complacent, too sceptical, maybe too comfortable in my own way of expressing faith to expect the miracle of the Lord's return? 
I mean, if Angel Gabriel came to us and told us something miraculous was going to happen in our lives, would we also, like Zechariah, question him? Question God? Be sceptical? I think perhaps it's a question we need to ask ourselves. I think it's good sometimes to ask yourselves questions. Somebody said, oh, I'm going mad. I talk to myself. I said, well, I talk to myself all the time. And they said, what happens when you answer yourself? Well, I said, I always give the right answer. So it's not a problem. But we need to ask ourselves important questions like that. If the Lord had a word for you, would you be skeptical? Or would you take God at his word? <coughs> As we continue to look at this account of the foretelling of the birth of John the Baptist, you can see the angel's response to Zechariah's skepticism. skepticism. Then the angel said, I am Gabriel. You can imagine him being a bit, you know, this man's questioning me. I am Gabriel. I stand in the very presence of God. It was he who sent me to bring you this good news. Well, now, since you don't believe what I said, you're not going to be able to speak until the day the child is born. For my word certainly will come true at the proper time. So Zechariah had to face the consequences of his doubts, of his unbelief, until he saw the fulfillment of the promise to him and his wife. And we see this time and again in the Bible. God sends a prophet to call his people back to them and they either killed the prophet or ignored him. And always there was a consequence. Either the people of Israel had to wander in the desert for 40 years or they failed to enjoy the blessings, the protection and the wonders that God had planned for them. And it got me thinking, how much time have we wasted doubting God's word? How much time have we been walking in a spiritual desert because of our own lethargy, our own spiritual laziness, scepticism? Or because we've stopped expecting Jesus to return again? Have we spent time getting ready spiritually for Christ's return have we I'm not sure I have completely if I'm really honest but I think we need to the Lord said to the church in Sardis in Revelation 3 verses 1 to 3 I know all the things you do and that you have a reputation for being alive but you are dead now wake up Strengthen what little remains, for even what is left is at the point of death. Your deeds are far from right in the sight of God. Go back to what you heard and believed at first. Hold on to it firmly and turn to me again. Unless you do, I will come suddenly upon you like a thief in the night. Now I'm not saying our church is dead. Don't misunderstand me. But I do believe we all need to wake up. We all need to wake up to the fact that Jesus will return because God has promised it. And we need to think, am I ready? Am I ready to meet Jesus face to face? Am I? Are you? I look around the world and I see the signs written about in Revelation, the things that were prophesied that would happen before Jesus re returns. There are wars, there are floods, there are fires, there are earthquakes, brother against sister, father, daughter against parents, evil seeming to prevail in this world. The Lord is coming again. Are you ready? Or are you in a lethargic or sceptical state in your spiritual life with the Lord? 
Are you ready? I ask myself, am I ready? Are you ready to meet Jesus? You know, when we look at the scripture, God's intention from the start was to reward and not to rebuke Zechariah and Elizabeth, to bless and not to break the two, and to congratulate, not to condemn the faithful couple. The angel said, I've come to bring you good news. Zachariah's attitude, nevertheless, Zachariah's attitude, nevertheless, was reservation, not rejection. Doubt, not desertion. An unfortunate, but not unforgivable. The priest had always had a flawless record of unsparing and outstanding service. And when he finally gets that vision, it's like, what? Are you sure? Further, Zechariah's cold shoulder was not Elizabeth's fault. The best gift God had given the priest was his wife, a godly wife. Elizabeth and her attitude was just the opposite of her husband she had faced disgrace in her com community because the thought was if you couldn't bear a child you had caused you defended God in some way you had sinned and at an old age finally she was pregnant and what did she do she went away for five months she hid herself away and thought on these things How kind the Lord is, she said. He has taken away my disgrace of having no children. Of course, Zechariah came around much later. God's ultimate purpose was for him to be stricken, not silenced. Not to be a mute, but to be a messenger. Not to be dumb, but to be delivered. You see, when Zechariah came out of the temple, having been struck dumb, the people saw from his face at last, after 400 years, somebody had a vision of God. Wow. But you know, it was only when he held his child and was being questioned about the name because the mother said his name's going to be John and they said, but that name's not in the family. Why John? Are you sure it's John? And finally his voice was heard saying, His name is John. And the people realised that God was in this child and their hearts were stirred in wondering how this child would turn out. Their expectation had returned and John grew to be John the Baptist the forerunner of Jesus Christ himself. And he, through his preaching, through his call for people to come back to God, had that exact experience. People came flooding to be baptised by John the Baptist. God fulfilled his promise. In fact, he, was, he has fulfilled every promise he has ever made. Can we say that? I don't think so. But God can. He has fulfilled every promise he has ever made. You see, God only wants what is good for us. But we must wake up and open our eyes and see it. If we don't, we will face the consequences of missing the Lord when he comes. Missing his blessings and missing out on the wonderful life he has promised us. You know, God's not satisfied with half-hearted, lethargic, sceptical, and sit-on-the-fence believers. He wants people who believe, people who are awake to the leading of his Holy Spirit, to the filling of his Holy Spirit, to the promises that he has given, to the guidance he offers he wants people who are ready for when he returns 
The good news is that no matter how disobedient man can be, God can still and does love us. It was a perfect tune. Oh, love that will not let me go. Because God doesn't let us go even when we doubt him. He loves us. And he wants what is good for us. And if we see and believe, we will be partakers of his kingdom and ready for his return. Are you ready? Ask yourselves, go home and pray about it. Go home and read your Bibles. Are you ready? Because if Jesus comes tomorrow and he could, we don't know. You need to be ready. How you face the consequences of missing the Lord. We're going to sing a lovely song, All Things Are Possible to Him. We're going to sing it. It's 485. I've put it wrong in the meeting plan. 485. Let me get it right. We're going to sing it to a different tune. Beautiful tune. Um, he banks and brays. So I'm going to ask you if you could play... Um, Richard, a few bars just to remind us of the tune. And then look at the words as you're singing them. All things are possible. And make it your prayer as you sing this song. Then I'm going to ask my husband to come and pray with us. 485, the, um, that's the wrong song. You've gone back to the beginning. Four eight five. I've put the wrong song on. Just keep pl pl playing for a moment. You got the songbook? Can somebody give some songbooks out, please. While we get the songbooks, just think about what I've said. Take time to pray, and then we'll sing together when you've got the songbook. Four eight five. Four hundred and eighty five in your song books. together.
Father God, we thank you for the promise that you gave to Elizabeth and you gave to Mary. For nothing is impossible with God. Nothing. Lord, there may be those here today who feel that they are facing something insurmountable, too, too difficult, too wide and deep to overcome. And yet we thank you, Lord, with your grace, with your mercy, with your power, the impossible can become possible. So, Lord, help us to trust you and realize you are God. You are the Almighty. You are the Eternal Father. And so we can trust you with every inch of our lives, every moment, every day. So, Lord, bless everyone who is here today because they are here to worship you and to seek your will for their life. And may they know your mighty power in their lives. May they trust you fully and know the peace that comes from doing that very thing. So bless us, Lord, as we share together in fellowship, as we practice in the community choir. And may we, we know your joy and your peace and your love in this coming week as we witness to your saving grace. We make this prayer in the wonderful, beautiful name of Jesus, the Saviour of the world. Amen. Thank you. 